This is what we have for next year. Initially, we had a number of subjects that we wanted to introduce. We had in mind to do water quality, commercial rehabilitation, infrastructure planning, and so on. We had a hard thought in your request and what you wanted to address, and we changed slightly the agenda and the topics we want to do. So the topics we're going to introduce for the last two years are two, financial asset management. That's the topic of next year, financial. So everybody's interested about money, wants to know now you capture all the assets. You really want to know what's the value of your utility. Everybody's excited, so let's find out. So we're doing financial asset management. So financial asset management is a very, very important topic. It's going to be introduced, and participants is also if you can, your financial people, your director financial, anybody who is financial, it's a good opportunity to become part of the project. Another reason why we need financial asset management is because it's introduction to rehabilitation planning. If you're going to do rehabilitation, you must have a good idea about costs. So without financial asset management, you can actually do rehabilitation. Now, this is a chain of events that one leads to the next. Correctly speaking, to come here, you must have maintenance. OK, we can't be discussing right now about financial asset management and rehabilitation planning if you don't have computerized maintenance. It is a sequence of events that, if you skip a step, becomes meaningless. Becomes a training and a theoretical exercise. The idea we have is we're going to do a series of four trainings over the, the last two years, I mean 2020 and 2021. 2020, it's introduction to financial asset management and integration to financial systems. Since a lot of utilities, they queried uh, how we integrate with the financial system. I would say with Champion Loznica here, that they really like to integrate with the financial. And we're going to introduce towards the end of the year the rehabilitation planning. And we're going to revisit both topics on 2021, rehabilitation and financial asset management. So the topics are the same. Actually, the two three parts of the topic. The one is financial asset management. The other one is condition assessment. How do you actually do condition assessment? And the combination of these two leads to rehabilitation planning. Now, for some of you, these are not theoretical issues. These are regulatory issues. I know a number of utilities, they're obliged to provide this information. And they're obliged by the government to provide this information to the financial department to report the valuation of the assets. Financial valuation, objective, to understand issues like replacement costs, remaining useful life. These are issues that have to be understood. Uh, now we're mixing specialties. You might be technical people, engineers, but these things you have to understand. For financial people, these are what they studied. They understand them much better. But technical people must also understand the concepts of remaining useful life, replacement value, current value, and also the existence of different values. The value is not something absolute. And we're going to introduce a major topic, which is standards and procedures. So, as part of what we're going to do, we're going to set up some standards. Some standards where we're going to say, all right, to your utilities, this is how you calculate original costs. This is how you calculate pipe replacement. This is how you calculate your default useful life. This is your decay care, decay curves for your assets. And this is how you use your depreciation. And this is how you should depreciate not like how the financial does it on straight line depreciation. And then 
we're going to discuss these procedures for the calculation of these values with the most important procedure, how do we export and we, we, information to the financial system. Now, when I say integration with financial system, this is an example of, of uh, depreciation curve. Very, very important concept. It relates the useful life with the condition of the asset. You have to understand these curves. You have to understand what this graph says. That says you cannot calculate the, the useful life of your asset if you don't know its condition. And that directly implies that you have to do condition assessment every number of years. Every three, every five years, you have to repeat your condition assessment. You can't just leave it out. It's not a, an exercise you can ignore. Different methods for depreciation of current value, historical cost, current cost, and so on. I'm, not gonna, I'm just showing you certain concepts that we're going to discuss next year. Original cost. What, where are we getting here? Where we're getting is very simple. Every asset you capture in the registry must have a date and a cost. That is the bottom line. We want every single asset should be associated with a cost and a date of that cost. That is the original cost. That is not necessarily that the day of purchase might be the day of construction, might be the day you calculate it, by the day you evaluate. In any case, that's your original cost of that asset. It's not an easy exercise. It has to be done. We will explain you the concept. That doesn't mean, again, by end of the year, you evaluate all your assets. But you have to be on a path to build it up, to know exactly, now that you have a validated and reliable asset registry to make an exact judgment and knowledge what actually is the cost associated with this registry. And then, how are we going to communicate with the financial system? Now, when we say about integration, it doesn't mean necessarily we're going to do live integration. That's not absolutely necessary. Because we're on the cloud, we're not going to do live integration. But we have to reconcile. The critical word here is reconciliation. We have to reconcile with the financial system. And that's the most tricky part. Because the financial system has different groupings, different coding, different understanding of assets. So there is a whole procedure how this to be reconciled. That means why we need financial people here. We need financial people here that they understand how the system works and how they're grouping their assets. So depending on the method that you're grouping your assets is the approach. From our experience, we have found that over time, the different methodologies and different ways financial people group their assets. They might group it by category. They might group pipes by diameter. They might group by material. They might group by zone. They might group by work in progress. They might group by a number of criteria. So we have built into the system that flexibility to develop the reconciliation with the financial system and at a specific time to be able to export grouping the information in the format the financial system wants them. That is the requirement. But the reconciliation exercise is, can be a lengthy exercise depending how good is your financial people and how up to date is the financial system. A gentleman just earlier discussed how he did condition assessment, I think from Koto, and he discovered the missing, or oh, has less 20 kilometers of pipe, and how he's going to explain it. Yes, because the two systems are not in sync, the different things in the one from the other. That reconciliation we're talking about. So, we have the modules, we have the methodology, we have the approach, but we need to understand your financial system and the way it groups the data and what is in that registry. Once we know and once this is done once, then the process is simple because on a yearly basis when they have to report, they just need to regroup according to the templates. These templates are stored and automatically are exported again and again to the financial system. 
And together with that, they can be mapping, they can be a number of, of exports or reporting. That's an example of valuation of a useful life of pipe work in one of the municipalities. So that covers the main topic to be addressed in a year, next year, is financial asset valuation. Uh, it's not a simple exercise, it's a lengthy exercise. Don't expect miracles overnight. It depends on you again. Depends how good is your financial system. The next topic that will come on the back of it is rehabilitation. Why we need rehabilitation? For two reasons. Because every year you need a rehabilitation plan and because that's the only way to activate your preventive maintenance. The objectives and the purpose is ob obvious, minimize cost of ownership, risk of failure, and so on and so on. The rehabilitation is directly related to risk. We're going to introduce the concept of risk. Risk in the, is in the heart of asset management. So two concepts come in line. First, the condition categories and the risk of failure. So again, we have to do with standards. We're going to establish certain standards for the municipalities relating to the risk of failure. And secondly, importance. These two concepts are very, very relevant. Risk and importance. How important is that asset for you? OK, the risk of failure is not the same with the importance. They're not exactly the same concept. So again, we have a number of categories. The combination of condition and importance classifies the assets and determines what approach we're going to use for the maintenance of that asset. This is proper best practices maintenance rehabilitation planning. That's how it's done. What these four blocks means, if you have an asset that is of low condition and low importance, you don't fix it. You let it break. You just do corrective maintenance. So it doesn't mean you, you, you fix everything that you identify. It depends on its importance and its condition. On the other hand, if it's of very high importance and of very good condition, then you do things like reliability maintenance. Reliability maintenance is done very often in manufacturing, in line process, in aeroplanes. Reliability maintenance is extremely important. And then you have items which are low importance, but in good condition. For those, you trigger maintenance based on the condition. And then you have other items which are of high importance, but low condition, and that you, 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 you make the maintenance based on a time, like a car. You fix a car depending on time. If, it's a, if you don't want the car to break down, you know it's not a good condition, so you say oh, so many kilometers, I take it for maintenance. That's preventive maintenance we discuss. That's all triggered through rehabilitation planning. And then, based on importance and risk of failure, you classify your assets on risk. So you have different categories of risk from extreme, high, medium, negligible, and so on. Um, so the EDAM system is specialized to understand all these procedures and build up rehabilitation and classify in different clusters all your assets, either being pipes or being networks or being pumps or being any other kind of equipment. That is, what I'm describing now is the heart of asset management and its proper rehabilitation planning procedures. You must remember that at the end of the day, every asset you have has an importance for you and it has a condition. Now, importance is very relevant. I always like to say that example from Thessaloniki. Thessaloniki last year, half the town was left without water. Why? Because a single pipe feeding half the town, it was for reconstruction for the last 10 years. The mayor kept on changing, so they always postponed the tender. The tender never came out. The, the, that pipeline broke down. Eventually, the whole town left without water. Nobody explained to these people that this is the most critical pipeline. Half a million people will be left without water. When it happened, everybody had an excuse. That's rehabilitation planning, and this is what we're going to discuss 
over the next two years. Uh, there is trainings associated with these issues, and this is the trainings that I showed you earlier. But that being said, I think that the last two years, they will be very, very interesting because you will start capitalizing on your efforts of the previous years. You will start seeing the benefits of things you've done. But doesn't mean, again, we're addressing everything. We're addressing the most important. And please remember that this is a process. It's not a program. It will take you years, some years, to improve, but every year you will be improving. And things that in the past you thought they were very difficult or not related to you, now they will become obvious and routine, like exporting to the financial department on a yearly basis all your technical asset registry. If I have spoken to you about this concept two, three years ago, you probably would be looking at me, asking me what I'm talking about. Now is something you would expect. <laughs>